Welcome to Audiobook 365 Stories. Around 30 years ago, a lady named Miss Maria Ward from Huntingdon, who had only 7,000 pounds, got married to Sir Thomas Bertram from Mansfield Park in Northampton. This made her a baronet's wife with a big house and lots of money. Everyone in Huntingdon thought it was a great match. Miss Ward's uncle, a lawyer, thought she deserved even more money. She had two sisters who also benefited from her marriage. Some people even thought her sisters were as pretty as she was and might marry someone rich too. But there aren't many rich men in the world compared to pretty women. After about six years, Miss Ward's situation changed. She had to marry a man named Reverend Mr. Norris, who didn't have much money. Her sister, Miss Frances, made an even worse choice by marrying a lieutenant of Marines who had no education, money, or connections. Sir Thomas Bertram wanted to help Miss Ward's sister because he liked to see everyone connected to him doing well, but her husband's job made it hard for Sir Thomas to help. So, there was a big fight between the sisters, and they stopped talking to each other for a long time. Their homes were far apart, and they didn't have much contact for the next 11 years. Sir Thomas was surprised whenever Mrs. Norris told them, angrily, that Fanny had another child. After 11 years, Mrs. Price couldn't afford to stay angry or proud anymore. She had a lot of children to take care of, a husband who couldn't work, and very little money. So, she wrote a letter to Lady Bertram, saying sorry and asking to be friends again. She explained how hard her life was and how much she needed their help. She was about to have her ninth baby and hoped they would be its godparents. She also mentioned her oldest son, who was 10 years old and eager to start working. She wondered if Sir Thomas could help him get a job related to his property in the West Indies. She asked if there was any opportunity for him in Woolwich or the East. The letter helped make peace between them. Sir Thomas sent friendly advice, Lady Bertram sent money and baby clothes, and Mrs. Norris wrote letters. Within a year, Mrs. Price got even more help. Mrs. Norris couldn't stop thinking about her sister and her family. She felt like she needed to do more for them, even though they had already helped a lot. She suggested that they should take care of Mrs. Price's oldest daughter, who was nine years old. She needed more attention than her mom could give. Lady Bertram agreed right away. She said, Let's bring the child here. Sir Thomas wasn't sure. He thought about his own kids and their cousins. But before he could say anything, Mrs. Norris interrupted him and said they should take the girl in no matter what. Mrs. Norris said, Sir Thomas, I understand you perfectly. Your kindness and thoughtfulness are clear. I agree with you that we should do everything we can to help this girl we've taken under our wing. I'm not one for big speeches, but I believe in doing what's right. Since I don't have kids of my own, I'd look to my sister's kids for help in any situation. Mr. Norris feels the same. Let's not be afraid to do good things just because they might seem small. If we give this girl an education and introduce her to society properly, chances are she'll be able to support herself without costing anyone more money. She may not be as pretty as her cousins, but she'll still have many advantages. You might worry about your sons, but trust me, they won't fall in love with her. They've grown up together like siblings, so it's impossible. I've never seen it happen, so don't worry. Even if she's very pretty, they'll only see her as a sister if she grows up with them. Sir Thomas said, you make a lot of sense. 
I don't want to stand in the way of a plan that fits everyone's situation, but we must be serious about it and make sure it helps Mrs. Price and reflects well on us. We should ensure that the girl is provided for as a lady, even if the future doesn't offer what you're hoping for. Mrs. Norris exclaimed, You're so kind and thoughtful. We'll always agree on this. You know I'll do anything for the people I love. Even though I don't feel as close to this girl as I do to your own children, I couldn't bear to see her in need when I have plenty to share. She's my niece after all. So, if you agree, I'll write to my sister tomorrow and make the offer. Once everything's settled, I'll arrange for the child to come to Mansfield. You won't have to worry about a thing. I'll send Nanny to London, and she can stay with her cousin the Saddler. Then they can travel from Portsmouth to London by coach, with a respectable person to look after them. There's always someone trustworthy traveling that route. Except for the complaint about Nanny's cousin, Sir Thomas didn't object anymore. A more respectable meeting place, though less cheap, was arranged instead. Everything was seen as settled, and the joy of such a kind plan was already being felt. But the happiness from this should not have been equal. Sir Thomas was determined to be the real supporter of the chosen child, while Mrs. Norris had no intention of spending anything on her care. She was generous in words and ideas, but loved money as much as she loved directing others. She had to be very careful with her spending since she didn't have children to take care of. If she had a family to support, she might not have saved money. But without that responsibility, she could focus on saving and adding to her income every year. She wanted the credit for organizing such an expensive charity, even though she might not have realized it. Perhaps she believed she was the most generous sister and aunt in the world. When the topic came up again, Mrs. Norris explained her views more clearly. When Lady Bertram asked where the child should come first, to her or to them, Sir Thomas was surprised to hear that Mrs. Norris couldn't take any responsibility for her care. He thought she would be a nice addition to the parsonage a good companion for an aunt without children, but he was wrong. Mrs. Norris said it wasn't possible for the girl to stay with them. Mr. Norris's poor health made it impossible. He couldn't stand the noise of a child. If he got better, it might be different, but for now, taking care of him took up all of Mrs. Norris's time. She was sure even talking about it would upset him. Then she should come to us, Lady Bertram said calmly. After a pause, Sir Thomas added, Yes, she will stay in this house. We'll do our best for her, and she'll have friends her age and a teacher. That's right, Mrs. Norris agreed. Those are important things. Miss Lee won't mind having three girls to teach instead of two. It'll be the same for her. I wish I could help more, but I'm already doing what I can. Nanny will bring her here, even if it means I'll miss her advice for three days. Sister, you'll put the child in the small white room near the old nurseries, won't you? It's the best place, close to Miss Lee, near the other girls, and next to the housemaids who can help with dressing her and taking care of her clothes. I don't think it's fair to expect Ellis to do everything for her. There's really no better place for her. Lady Bertram didn't object. I hope she'll be a good girl, Mrs. Norris said. She's really lucky to have such good friends. If she turns out to be badly behaved, Sir Thomas said, we can't keep her here for the sake of our children, but I don't think she'll be that bad. We might find some things we don't like about her. Maybe she'll be ignorant or have some strange opinions, 
and her manners might not be great. But those aren't things that can't be fixed, and I don't think they'll be harmful to our children. If my daughters were younger, I'd be more worried about having her around. But since they're not, I think it'll be fine for them and good for her. That's exactly what I was telling my husband this morning, Mrs. Norris exclaimed. Being with her cousins will be like an education for her. Even if Miss Lee doesn't teach her anything, she'll learn good things from them. I hope she won't bother my poor pug, Lady Bertram said. I've just managed to get Julia to leave it alone. There will be a bit of a challenge, Mrs. Norris, Sir Thomas remarked, in figuring out how to treat the girls differently as they grow up. How to make sure my daughters understand who they are without making them feel superior to their cousin, and how to help her remember that she's not a Miss Bertram without making her feel too down. I want them to be good friends and I won't allow any arrogance from my girls towards their cousin, but they won't be equals. Their social status, wealth, rights, and expectations will always be different. It's a delicate situation and we'll need your help to navigate it. Mrs. Norris was happy to help, agreeing that it was a tough situation but optimistic that they could handle it together. It's easy to imagine that Mrs. Norris's letter to her sister was effective. Mrs. Price was a bit surprised that they chose a girl when she had so many boys, but she was very grateful for the offer. She assured them that her daughter was well-behaved and friendly, and she hoped they wouldn't regret taking her. She mentioned that her daughter was a bit fragile and weak, but she was hopeful that a change of environment would be good for her. Poor woman. She probably thought that a change of scenery might benefit many of her children, 